Hey, you. Yeah. You. Purdue did some pretty crazy stuff to end up here. Me? We don't worry about that. We want to get out of here, right? I do too, but I can tell we're both dumber than a sack of rocks and can't put stuff together, if you know what I mean. Well, leave all the finer details to me on how we get out of here. I can find a way for both of us, if you're willing to tag along. The stage is set, cameras are rolling, and it's time to put on a show! Hello my fellow entities of the interwebs, I am Generic Mystic, and I will be your guide today for breaking out of the coldest and oldest prisons around and answering the following. Can you escape every prison in The Escapist 2 without crafting? Welcome to Center Perks 2.0, our first stop on our journey through the many prisons. As the tagline mentions, this prison is supposedly more secure than its predecessor, but said claims are questionable at best. So, with all the guards wandering around, it'll be tough to get out of here. Take an iron bar to this wall and you're out. Yeah. Yes, I know, this isn't the most exciting introduction to a challenge. It should be known, though, that I don't want to overcomplicate things if possible, so taking the most direct and simplistic route for escaping will be preferred. If we were inclined to, we could also cut through one of the many fences at nightfall, but why do that when you can get out during the day? With all that said, let's roll to the next prison. In the heat of the desert sun, we make it to Rattlesnake Springs, our first challenging prison of the run. This map boasts a thick perimeter wall that cannot be chipped through, so we need to get crafty. Or, well, not crafty, since that's the whole point of the challenge. Uh, so what's our way out? Well, the tunnels beneath our feet seem to suggest a seemingly straightforward route. We just have to get down there, chip a few chunks of debris, and we're out. But where to dig is a much more complex question. Due to the layout of the tunnels in prison, there are many places that we can dig down, but to better help limit our options, let's first take a look at what tools can be used to dig. Wait, you can just do that? Bruh. Bruh. That's lame. Really? Oh. That's lame. Oh, this is why I should do research more. I just didn't think you'd be allowed to chip through an outside wall on the second floor. Like, in what world is that normally just a thing that you can do? It's like... If it really is as simple as this. Hey, come on. Yeah, and then... Oh, there's just a... Is that just a gu guard down there? Well, okay. Uh... Cool. I I should probably... Research speedruns of games before I end up doing stupid stuff. Yeah, I was told a far better strategy for this prison, and we don't even need to worry about going over what we need to use to dig, because we don't need to dig. We can just take a heavy chipping tool like a crowbar or an iron bar to this wall on the second floor, hop down, and then we're out. Our next stop is the theatrically appropriate Camp of Kapow. This person introduces electrified fences on the perimeter, so we can't simply chip one wall and escape, but I welcome the change. Anyhow, our first priority is to locate where the generator is so that we can plan a route from its location. 
After a quick look around, we find that the generator is towards the bottom right of the map. The closest fence we can access is the ones to the south, which means we have to chip a wall to even get there. Additionally, it takes roughly two files to cut through one fence, so we'll need four total for our escape. Now to tackle the problem of getting the contraband over there. There's a very obvious contraband detector we'd have to go through, so what's the solution? Well, the first solution is just to go around. There's an entrance to the north of the building that can be used to completely bypass the detector, so way to go on that security. The other solution is to turn off the generator. This powers down all contraband detectors, security cameras, and lights in the prison. The time the generator stays shut off for is typically 90 seconds, or one in-game hour and 30 minutes. In that time, we can move the contraband to the room we will make our escape from. As final prep, have an adrenaline shot by the fence to recover your energy. As for the escape, just hope that a guard doesn't take a stroll through your room while you are out and about. Make sure that you are in the generator room and preferably wearing a guard uniform when lights out begins. When the bar depletes and no guards are around, begin by chipping the wall away. Once the wall has fallen, switch off the generator, place back the wall when outside, go down to your fence cutting area, drink the shot, and then file through the fence. From there, it's a straight shot to the end of our third prison. With the salty spray of the sea, we move to now escape from the dreadfully named HMP Offshore. With a painful reminder of a similarly named prison in a different game, this one can seem terrifying to take on from just a glance. Alright, let's get the main difficulty of this prison out of the way. The idea of doing a perimeter breakout is not as simple as going to the edge of the screen like before, seeing as walking on water is not something that is currently in our skill set of escaping prisons. Instead, we will have to rely on either a helicopter or a boat. For the boat, we would need to prepare two files along with timing a generator shut off with a lot of stuff, so we aren't going to do that method due to how convoluted it is compared to the helicopter. As for our flying vehicle escape, we only need to get a staff key and make it into the guard building filled with guards while going across a long exposed platform that snipers can shoot at. Yeah, okay, it's a little harder than one would think. Our first problem is the red key. We need one, and we need to know how to get one for the escape. Seeing as we can't craft a fake, one from a guard is what will be necessary. For us, the 1st, 3rd, 10th, and 13th guards in the lineup when setting up the prison will have a red key on their person. We're gonna give their names to something identifiable, like all uppercase Bs. The second problem is the snipers. Knocking out a guard will shoot our heat up to the maximum, and any heat above 80 will cause the snipers to take aim at us. For that, we need to stall as much time as we can to lower our heat back down to 79 or lower. This stalling can be better accomplished by binding the guard you knock down with rope or duct tape. Another way to counter this is by stockpiling medkits. Using them to tank the bullets from the sniper is a valid strategy, and while it may take a little longer, it is a safer approach. I'm an impatient person though, so I go recklessly in my attempts. Finally, in our list of ever-growing problems is Lockdown and by extension, the dogs. Lockdown will trigger whenever the guard with a missing key wakes up, which will send two dogs that track onto your location and will not stop until you get knocked down. You just have to be fast enough to get to the helicopter to escape them though, so this is the smallest threat of the three. Now with all of that explanation out of the way, let's escape. Alright, we're just going to roll with this.
I hate this. It's normally not supposed to be this easy. Oh my gosh. Welcome to the Bitter North, where the snapping jaws of the cold will be the least of our worries. The main challenge of this prison is an unchippable perimeter wall with a layer of electric fencing to make things that little bit harder. Just like last time, our first objective is to find the generator to narrow down our potential escape locations, which can be found in the top right corner of the map. We will need two files, an adrenaline shot, and a chipping tool to prepare for this part. As for the perimeter wall, we can only dig under it to get past this obstacle. Due to how the game functions, going horizontally under the wall works better than vertically traveling due to occupied tiles, blah blah blah. Trust me, it's faster. Now as for digging, remember that tangent I tried to go on at Rattlesnake Springs? Well, we can completely ignore that. In Fort Tundra, in Fort Tundra alone, there is a favor that can be taken called the Uprising. The objective is to beat up three different guards in the prison, with the third giving you a sturdy pickaxe as a reward. After getting everything together, it's time to make our escape. We get the guard uniform, wait for the bar to deplete, chip through the generator room wall, turn off the generator, place the wall back, go out and around to the parking lot, take the adrenaline shot, cut the fence, dig under, dig through, dig up, and break out! With the hottest deserts, the toughest waves, and the coldest tundras behind us, we have more desert. But it's a different desert this time. We spend most of it underground and none of it is exposed to the sun's rays and instead shower numerous times a day. The main feature of this prison is, as previously mentioned, how it is primarily underground instead of above. This can severely limit our points of escape, but seeing as our process of breaking out does that anyways, this isn't too much of a hassle. Now then, for us to escape, we have to get past an electric fence and a single wall. This will of course require a chipping tool, two files, and an adrenaline shot. As for the generator, it can be found in the bottom right corner of the map. This puts the room directly above that is accessible by staircase as a lovely point to break out from. We will need to drop our tools of escape for a moment to deal with the contraband detector directly in the way of the generator, but after that, we will only need to go through one additional wall, which of course means an additional chipping tool and adrenaline shot. As for the escape, when the time comes, don your blue attire, go through the movements, break, cut, break, and you're out of here! In the final frontier of space, we race to erase any trace of our case. 
Just like with HMP Offshore, our methods of escape are severely limited by the setting we were placed in, this time being the great playmat of the universe. Also fitting with this theme, there are specific points on the map that we must go to to escape. Our simplest way of breaking out is via a shuttle on the second floor of the prison. The shuttle is unfortunately blocked by numerous layers of protection. On the innermost layer, we require two files to get through a fence, after that comes a staff door, and then a maintenance door. Both of these require keys, but there are ways around them. To prepare, you will need a chipping tool, two files, a roll of duct tape, and maybe an adrenaline shot if you want to go faster. Once prepared, and directly after roll call, going upstairs making sure to avoid any guards because you'll trigger a contraband detector unless if you have a pouch as well. When the coast is clear, go to the top right area, duct tape the camera, and chip through the wall to the right. Get to the other side, place the wall back, cut the fence, and escape! It's a little sad how easy it is to escape all of these prisons in such a short amount of time, honestly. Almost everything shown so far has either been the speedrun route or a less risky variant of one, simply because it's faster to not craft than to craft at all. But we still have some prisons, so maybe that'll change? This next small section of video will be on the transport prisons. Why do I group them all together, you may ask? Well, it has to do with all of them being possible to complete without crafting, but only if playing with multiple people. In The Escapist 2, there are single player, multiplayer, and mixed breakouts. Each transport prison has two single player exclusive and two multiplayer exclusive breakouts available for us, but only the HMS Orca has a single player escape that is possible to complete without crafting. So I invited a friend to join me in taking over various transportational vehicles. Our objective is just to knock out the three guards in each control room and then we can get out. Now with all of the base game prisons out of the way, we're on to the DLC prisons. Welcome to the next section of great programming, provided to us by our glorious leader. In this camp, we will all be happy with a nice and unbreakable wall to keep us safe, thanks to our glorious leader. If said protection is lacking, worry not. A generator providing constant monitoring of our residence and electrical fencing will ensure a better life, courtesy of our glorious leader. Ugh, alright, enough of that. What are we gonna get out of here? Well, exclusively in this prison, there is a favor chain that we can complete to get a plastic staff key, but that won't be needed for our escape. Instead, we will only need six files for three fences and a guard uniform. Our eyes look to the westernmost part of the map where the generator lies. Once you have everything set up, wait for the lights out bar to deplete and take action. Use two files to cut through the generator fence, turn off the generator, and make your way as fast as you can to the right side of the map. Once at the gate you use to enter the prison in the intro cutscene, follow your way through the two fences, and you are out.
In a spooky prison, we must escape our fate as test subjects of a mad scientist. This prison isn't too special, having only a single wall and an electric fence to get through, but the question of how to shut off the generator looms over us. For the first time, a generator that we need turned off requires a maintenance key to get through the door. Thankfully, that vent in the floor gives alternate methods of getting in. Taking a screwdriver to the maintenance room to the north of it will allow us to carve a path to our goal. From there, we only need a guard outfit, chipping tool, two files, an adrenaline shot, and a lovely sense of timing. Alright, so when the roll call is halfway through completion, turn off the generator, wear the outfit, and sprint downstairs past the roll call area to the northern exit. Wait for the bar to deplete, and then blast your way through all of the obstructions and escape. Welcome to the second Christmas prison made for the escapists too. We'll get to the first one eventually for pacing reasons. Anyhow, welcome to the cold once more where a very outdoorsy prison awaits us. Now then, let's deal with our difficulties in escaping. This time we have a mixture of unchippable perimeter wall and electric fencing. There's a single weak spot located on the eastern end of the prison, but it requires going through one regular and one electric line of fencing. So with that, we will obviously need four files, but where's the generator? Well, directing our attention to the factory will answer our call. We do face an unfortunate problem of once again having a maintenance store blocking our path. Thankfully, a well-placed vent saves the day again. Have some additional prep done by having a screwdriver on hand for your escape. When it comes time, go through the motions once more, wait for the bar, wear the uniform, get to the second floor, and when no guards are approaching the second floor, unscrew the vent. Normally, there should be three guards stationed on the factory floor that never go upstairs, so keep that in mind whenever you are trying to assess whether or not it is safe. From there, wait for a time when no guards will be at the fence. This generator is less generous with time, offering 60 seconds, so you need to make each of those seconds count. Once ready, switch it off, Hop off the ledge to the ground, cut the fence, cut the other fence, and escape. Now, welcome to the first prison for Christmas specialing. It's in this prison that we face all the luxuries that an easy prison provides, so let's get right to it. One look around shows that we have one way out again that doesn't require digging under a wall, but to get through the electric fence, we will need to shut off a generator. This generator is located on the south side of the prison and is locked behind a maintenance door. So all we need to do is use the vent system to get in there and... Oh, we can't get out once inside. Alright then, that's cool. We can just... No, we can't chip through the wall either. Well, there's the option to dig into the room, and while taking forever to do, it's a way into the room, so I guess I shouldn't complain. Alright, so after digging that hole, we make our escape plan. Two files, two chipping tools, two adrenaline shots placed on the north end of the prison, and a guardian form. We need to be fast like with Wicked Ward, so time your generator switch off with roll call. If timed correctly, you'll get out of the prison just in time. From there, we just need to wait for the bar to deplete and... What? It's already back on! That fast? Let's just go back and run the test real quick. We flip the switch off and start our timer, basing it on the clock. 
After only 30 seconds, it's back on. All right, well, that's a huge problem for us. Due to this generator staying off for such a short amount of time, this makes our escape out of the top of the prison impossible. So what are our options? We don't have the digging power with spoons to get under the wall before the hole gets discovered and covered up. So is this the end? No, this isn't over yet. As I was streaming these prisons live, I got advice from another speedrunner about a possible workaround to our digging problem. So let's go over it real quick. In the maintenance staff rooms, there are desks flagged appropriately to have unique loot upon opening. One of the potential items in the loot pool is a lightweight shovel. For the entirety of this challenge up to the final three prisons, I was not aware that this item was possible to obtain. Shows how well the game is documented on the fandom wiki. Anyways, break into these maintenance rooms through various means, be it through a vent or a wall. Check the desks every day until you have three lightweight shovels. From there, prepare an adrenaline shot or two, a guard uniform, and chill in the cold outdoors while the bar depletes. Dig on the eastern wall, going under, through, and up. Once out, it's an escape for you. If Santa's shakedown was easy, then this is... not easy. Welcome to the never-ending party of Big Top Breakout, where the greatest show is our turmoil in trying to break out. Just like with our previous prison, our only escape to freedom requires digging under a perimeter wall. So where are the maintenance desks? What? Singular, not plural? Alright, well, where is it? Oh, right here in the open. And we can't chip into it? Lovely. Just... lovely. Thankfully, the solitary confinement is directly above the maintenance room, meaning that when we fight against a guard with the appropriate key, we have ample space to take them down. You just need to beat them up, check the desk, and put the key back before they get up. And you have to keep doing this. Once a day. Every day. Until you have enough shovels to escape. And each day in-game is roughly 20 minutes. You could easily sink hours into this prison with no results due to what is nothing more than luck of what we think is a 1 in 6 chance, but we aren't completely certain of. <clears throat> Once you have gotten the shovels you need, prepare any other supplies for the escape, including adrenaline shots, guard outfit, files, etc. You know the drill at this point. My suggestion of where to dig is at the top right of the map, as guards are unlikely to come to this point, but they still can, so be alert. When everything has been gotten, bar depleted, timing right, dig out for an escape from this nightmare of a prison. And now, for the prison that, if you know enough about this game, will be the reason you've watched this video. Dungeons & Duct Tape is our final destination, and as the only DLC prison rated at a hard difficulty, it definitely lives up to the hype. The first thing to note in this prison is the high castle walls, which are extremely thick and impossible to chip out of. Not too important, but still can be inconvenient. The moat, however, is an entirely different, 
much larger problem. So walls can be chipped, fences can be cut, but a moat? What can you do against that? You obviously can't go around it, it's a moat. It's meant to surround an entire area as a defense mechanism. You also can't go over it because, well, there isn't a way to do that. Going through it? Yeah, right. Like, you could just walk on water. But maybe we can go under it? Maybe? Well, it really just depends on where we try to dig. If we go onto the map display, there are some areas with thin enough strips of water to maybe get us a way through. Checking each of these locations that seem to be possible, we run into the problem of janky collision. With that, we can't use any of these spots, which means that our only plan of attack is foiled. But in testing, I found another way. The first thing that we have to do is get a reliable way to the other side of the right wall. By digging in this spot and then first carving out a path to where the well is and then carving out a path to the other side of the wall, we have a completely reliable way to get on each side without the guards ever covering up the holes. From there, we dig on this cliff face and then make a tunnel connecting our two holes on the right side of the wall. From there, we're kind of stuck. There isn't a direct way to go because it's all water, but on the surface, we find that the collision being jank is actually interesting. We can sometimes clip onto the river and get stuck, and sometimes we can just clip back onto the ground. So that's interesting. But by far, the most interesting property of this is that if we clip in just the right spot, we get the ability to dig water. Let me repeat that. Dig water. So we dig water and we clip back and bounds after enough jostling. We go into the hole and then Because this my folks <laughs> This My lovely viewers, my fellow Entities of the interwebs. This is what happens when you try to beat every single person in the game without crafting. <laughs> oh, look at that number! Oh, look at that number! Who cares if that is F grade? You know what that F stands for? First in the world to do this stuff. Yeah. We prove that it is possible to escape dungeons and duct tape without crafting, and that yes, it is possible to escape every prison in The Escapist 2 without crafting. I'd like to give a huge thanks to Jay Headley, the speedrunner who helped me figure out that there are shovels in the maintenance desks, for helping me out with a lot of this run. Without them, I probably still would have been on Dungeons and Duct Tape, so sincerely, I thank you. I'd also like to give thanks to Shiny Dino Boy for giving corrections to routing in earlier prisons. That clip with Rattlesnake Springs is proof of my overcomplication on certain things, so I thank you as well.
I give thanks to my friend, Alpha Demon Wolf, for helping me get the footage for the multiplayer escapes. I'm really thankful that he could make time for the recording, so I thank you as well. I begrudgingly give thanks to the fandom wiki for the information that was provided that I did use, like which keys are on which guards, and the uprising favor that I actually added to the fandom wiki. You're welcome! Nevertheless, everyone that contributed information on this game, I give thanks. Finally, of course, I give thanks to you, the viewer, for watching. If you enjoyed this video, drop a like and leave a comment so you can tell me about how much you enjoyed this video, or not, I like the feedback. If you enjoy watching my challenge runs, then be sure to hit subscribe. I don't upload often, but when I do I try to make it worth your time to watch. Now then, with all of that said, I have been Generic Mystic, and I wish you a wonderful rest of your day, and may we meet once more on the interwebs.